know nothing, Jon Snow. And you either, Tyrion, you drink and you know things. I think you're just drunk. Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast, where liking what you like is never a bad thing. Here's your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Hi, y'all. Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast. I'm your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday, and um, this is our first show. <laughs> Everybody insert your fangirl squee here because it's kind of exciting. <laughs> Now, we are kicking off with Game of Thrones, um, mostly due to timing. Not that it's like my biggest fandom. However, as you all know, um, the series is wrapping up next week. Next week. And this last season made us wait like for 100 years before it even came out. So there's a lot to, to be said about what's going on. And so we wanted to go ahead and get this talked about while it's still relevant. And we watched the show last night. And we got to talk about this, guys. We got to talk about this. But we're going to be careful. Um, I will give you a full-on warning, 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 spoilers ahead when we get to that point in the show. So feel free to listen to everything now. Um, do you want to point out, though, that this show is being recording after eight seasons of the – I mean, you know, it's been eight seasons, right? So – there's going to be some spoilers if you have never seen this show before. <laughs> if you have never watched a single Game of Thrones episode, you will hear about people that died. We're going to try to be careful with how we phrase that, but you you will you will you will know um, if you decide to listen to this whole show. So just a heads up on that part. Um, but today I have two guests with me, and we have Nicole and Ashley, and we are going to bend the knee and fangirl the Game of Thrones together. <sighs> All right, ladies, I'm going to start with Nicole. Hey, Nicole, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. Now, Nicole is um, here with us from California, and you can find her on Instagram at goodthoughtsnick, and she blogs over at goodthoughtsinc.com. And Nicole, what else do you want to tell us about you? Uh, just a, I've been a geek since birth, thanks to... Uh, my mom's side of the family, three generations of geeks. And yeah, I love Game of Thrones, cosplaying, Marvel, Star Wars, and talking about it. So I'm really excited about it. Excellent. Today. And I'm so ha glad you're here. And I met Nicole online through Run Disney Costume Running. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been years, Nicole. I thought about this the other day. I think we met like in 2013 or something. So it's been, it's been a while. <laughs> It's been a while, and, and I love that it's been, um, like, through a love of Disney and costumes and just, you know, letting your geek flag fly high, basically. Exactly, exactly. And and we've, we've met in person, and we've hung out, and we had a fantastic time last year at D23 Expo, and Nicole's just one of the best people in the entire world. So yes. everybody love on Nicole. <laughs> All right, so Ashley. <laughs> Um, this is Ashley Saunders, and she is a mom, a wife, blogger, and nerd uh, blogger, blogging out of Virginia. I have known Ashley not quite as long as Nicole, but pretty close. And it was also through the love of Disney that we met. <laughs> yes. Disney brings a lot of people together. <laughs> they do. I think that it also tears a lot of people apart, but <laughs> that's for another show. We'll talk about that another time. <laughs> so you can find <laughs> Ashley um, on Twitter at that Ashley Aaron, and her blog is with Ashley and co.com. And Ashley, what do you want to tell us about yourself? Um, like Nicole, I've been a geek since birth. I, I read a lot. I like to dress up. If I love a fandom, I'm in there 100%. And it's just, it's a great thing. I love the geek like life. I really do. It's, you meet some of the greatest people and you get to talk about awesome things and you never have a boring life, I think, when you're a geek. <laughs> I, I like that. That's a, that's a good way to sum it up. And what I like about it is like there's different levels of geeks and we're all like, 
Ashley and Nicole are totally into comic books and they're hardcore on that level. I'm not, but yet here we are, friends hanging out together, having a podcast session. It, you don't you don't all have to be on the same level. You can you can mix and match, right? <laughs> Definitely. Oh, for sure. <laughs> All right. So back to um, my show note. I just wanted to make sure everybody's aware that we are recording this the morning after Daenerys, Queen of Dragons, turns into um, <laughs> Daenerys, Mother of War Crimes, because she just kind of went a little bit nuts last <laughs> night. And <laughs> we'll we'll get into that in a minute. Um yeah, right. I mean, she she went nuts, guys. I mean, she finally she finally went nuts. All right, so let's get into Game of Thrones now. From my perspective, how I fell in love with Game of Thrones actually started with the books. This was probably back in two thousand nine through two thousand ten. I don't even know how I came across them or who told me to read them, but it was well before the series started airing on HBO, and I devoured the books. And I do remember because George R. R. Martin, who writes them takes forever <laughs> forever yeah. to finish oh, his stories gosh, which is it. cool <laughs> which is cool cuz they're good stories but um forever so i do remember i read like i don't know two or three quickly and then i had to wait a really long time for the next one and in the meantime while i was waiting hbo came out with the series and if you are interested in those books, uh, they're A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. And you can find it, of course, on Amazon and anywhere in your local library. And they're on Audible um, as well, because I actually have them on my account. And I listen to them when I'm driving around in the car. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. My understanding is this last season, he gave the writers an outline of this next book that he's working on. So they have a general idea of where he's going to take the story. But the, this is all new territory. He could change it up completely on us. Yeah, I heard somebody say they're wondering if he's waiting to see the response of the fans, whether or not he keeps this ending or not. Interesting, interesting. Uh, yeah, that's really interesting. I'm still salty that he didn't finish the books ahead of the show. I'm very, very salty. I, about I, I that. feel like, I don't know. I feel like it, I, I would have preferred it. I'll be, yeah, I'll be honest with you because at least we would have known what his true intention was and, um, th- these outcomes that are, you know, would make sense or not. You know? I actually, I'm a huge reader. And, and so when I had heard that they were going to make a TV series out of this, I was like, all right. And I picked up the book and then I set it back down because he hadn't finished the series. And I got so burned by Stephen King on that with the whole um, Dark Tower series that I was like, oh, no, you know what? I'm going to wait. I'll read it when he finishes because surely he's going to finish this, you know, within the time frame of the TV show. So and clearly that didn't happen. So. <laughs> no, so, no I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll read it eventually. No, nope. but um, yeah, I, I, I had, I was all ready to read the book, and then I was like, yeah, you know, I think I'll wait. So. That's funny. Yeah, I, you read the books, right, Ashley? Yes, I did. I got into the series as a book reader first. I don't. I think I was babysitting, and the people I was babysitting for had. The books and I love fantasy novels. I read fantasy fiction a lot, and I picked it up. and I like dragons, and I like wolves, and I like lions, and I like the whole kings and queens and castles and stuff. So it literally sounded right up my alley, and I got hooked into the book. And then that one particular mm-hmm. death that happens—it doesn't even happen at the end mm-hmm. of book one, mind you. It happens like. I don't even know, maybe three quarters of the way in. And I was sitting there going, what is this guy doing? Why are you doing this to a main character? And I knew from that point on that don't expect to know how it's going to end because you never would have thought that that character would have gone at least that quickly. So I I was like, oh, man, we are in for it with this. And then the show debuted and I really liked the show. And it was nice being the book reader watching the show because you already knew what was going to happen, whereas everyone else was freaking out about things online. <laughs> I could just sit back and laugh. <laughs> yeah, Ashley, you know how much I love – personally, I love spoilers, like before movies. I, I try really hard not to because I'm trying to be more mature as I age. Um, 
<laughs> and not get into all the spoilers. But that's exactly how I felt. I was like, I know everything. <laughs> and uh, it took some of the stress coming out of it. But I will also tell you, because I knew things, there were episodes I particularly skipped. And to this day, I have not watched it because I cannot handle seeing that on screen. And you know which one I'm talking about. It's The Red Wedding. I just can't oh, do it. Yeah. Can't do yeah. it. Yes. So there's my confession for the show is like, yeah. I have not seen every single episode because that one, I knew what was going to happen and I just couldn't, I, my heart couldn't take it. So mm-hmm. I, I didn't do it. Um, yeah. All this to be said, parents, if you're listening, this series is not family friendly. <laughs> um, absolutely not. Oh, um, not. Not, <laughs> not in any conceivable way. And, um, you know, I'm putting on my mom hat here. If you have kids that want to watch it or read it, I would say no. Um, <laughs> at least hold off until late teens. Like I have a 16 year old and he probably could watch it. But the point is he doesn't need to watch it. So he doesn't need to, you know, there's too many boobs. He doesn't need to see it. He can wait on that. <laughs> lots of boobs, lots of boobs, people. <laughs> and, uh, that- well, and Ashley, you're pretty conservative <laughs> with your kids. They're younger than mine, but you're still pretty conservative. And you'd say no to this, right? Oh, okay, okay. yeah. No, heck no. Like, they asked when they could watch it. I was like, when you're 30. Like, you can't watch it ever. Nicole, when did your mom let you watch it? <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Um, no, actually, my mom hasn't seen it, even though I think she would absolutely love the story um, simply because of um, all the violence. It's just, it's too much for her. Uh-huh. And, and it's a she's lot. seen a lot of, um, she she likes war yeah. films um, and she can watch those, not a problem, but uh, things like this where it just kind of takes it that one extra step. Yeah. She's, she, I was like, nope, sorry. You're, you're, you're too young for this. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> okay. So there's our parental <laughs> warning both ways for your parents yeah. and for your children. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So for, for anybody that doesn't really know what happens in Game of Thrones, we're, this is the general gist of the plots. So there's three main stories that are going on. There's an ongoing war among several families for c- control of the Iron Throne, for c- control of Westeros. And then there's this supernatural plot line that's um, supernatural plot line that's going on with the others. And that's kind of focused in the far, far north reaches of Westeros. And then there's the path of uh, Queen Daenerys Targaryen. She is the mother of dragons. And like I said earlier, the mother of war crimes now. Um, <clears throat> she is the Mad King's daughter and she's been exiled, but she wants that throne and she wants it bad and that's where we are now is some of the other things have kind of taken have have been been answered and have been handled and have been taken care of and right now with one episode left we basically have um denarius going after her throne so like i mentioned this this, po- this 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 podcast is new. However, the show Game of Thrones has been on the air since 2011. So I'm hoping that if you are willingly participating, you're either way okay with hearing about spoilers, <laughs> or you have watched all of it and you're just into the show just like we are, and you're cool with talking about it because that's your warning. Um, there are going to be you know some discussions ahead that some folks might say is a spoiler and I just want to put it out there that I I've warned you and be you're right because the show's been going on since 2011 catch up people. All right. So we kind of talked about this already, but when, when did you become a game of Thrones fangirl? Like what would you say, Nicole, start with you. What would you say was the moment that you're like, I am all in like when you watched which, which part, which, how far into season one did it take you? Was it that first episode? Did it take you six episodes? Like, where did you, where did it get you? What was the moment that you were like, I love the show? Gosh, I think I want to say even before the show started, I was a, uh, I'm a Sean Bean fan. So I was like, dude, I'm, I'm in it. And then they had me at dragons really. So I was like, whenever we have dragons, I'm a happy camper. I am trying to remember if it's first episode where, and I'm, this is spoilers people. So heads up, um, where Danny walks out with the hatched dragon eggs. That was huge for me, but the big Ned Stark scene, I went, this is unlike any show I have ever seen where, I mean, he's a main character and 
he's he's gone. And I was like, oh my gosh, they went there. They could do that. What else are they going to do? Um, like I was invested yeah. to start with, but that I think was really the big game right. changer for me where I went, okay, this is not a normal show that I've ever watched before. And I'm really excited about that. Yeah, I, I'm super into happy endings, <laughs> so that was not a happy ending. Um, but at the same time, I appreciated that they kept true to the books and they were basically saying uh, no one is too precious in Westeros. Like, you know, don't don't fall in love. You're going to break your heart, kid, because it's it's coming. Um, so, yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, what about you, Ashley? Where When did you... When did you decide this is something I'm watching no matter how long it takes for them to get these episodes out? I'm watching it all. Um, like I said, I I love the books. And so I was super excited about the show. So I, so I think just from the books, I was just in from the, the get-go. And I like the idea that it wasn't predictable. It didn't follow the general storyline of all those types of stories. There's no way, you know, Ned would have gone so soon in a typical, you know, novel like that or a series like that. There's just, there was no way. And so as much as I like that, it wasn't predictable. There were several moments in the book and obviously in the show that I just, I was so angry. I mean, you talked about the red wedding and that you didn't want to watch the episode because you knew it was going to happen. The red wedding. I remember reading that. And when all of it starts to go down, I had to reread it because I was I was sitting there in disbelief. I was like, there's no way this just happened. I read that wrong. And then when I realized I hadn't read it wrong, I was like, oh, my God, what is this man doing to me? And I that almost made me step away. Yeah, but yep. I held on. I held on. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was that's actually my next question, but and I think you and I are right there in that same place. The Red Wedding was what gave me my my biggest pause, my, uh, I can't keep doing this guys. I I, got it. I got to back out of the game of Thrones. And, and I did, like I said, I didn't watch, I think two, maybe two episodes of that. It took me a little bit before I felt like I could trust my feelings and go back in to finish watching it. (laughs) Nicole, is there any point in the, in the series that you considered backing out? I don't think I ever considered backing out, but there were, the Red Wedding was very, very cringy. Um, uh, the mountain scene with, um, and I'm totally blinking on his name, but that, that fight scene where he's got his thumb in his eyes and, oh, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. that where I just went, I, I remember, um, cause my mom kept going, Oh, maybe I'll watch this. Maybe I'll watch this. And I, I, I literally turned around. I was like, Nope, <laughs> this is not happening. Um, but I don't think I ever thought I'm going to give up on this. I just, yeah, it just. It's like, okay, this is intense and this is Game of Thrones. It, it, that's it, that's exactly it. This is Game of Thrones. This is intense. And we have summed up the entire <laughs> the entire point of this series. But yeah, I mean it's it's just it's crazy. And I have a love hate with all of it and just waiting for that shoe to drop was always it was oh it, it just it got to me. If you could change any death or bring any character back. Who would it be and why? Is there anyone that you would want back? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, it's hard because there's so many dead people on the show. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I'm, I'm sad about a current character in this last episode that didn't make it. Um, I would have liked to see that character continue on. Um Oh, ones that I just, yeah. Oh, no, Shireen. That's that's who I was really uh, sad about. Oh, gosh. That was awful. That was the worst thing ever. And yeah, that was that was terrible. That was probably the only one that I was like, yeah, no, she needs to come back. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was awful. Uh, what about you, Ashley? Do you have anybody that you'd bring back? Um, So I'm going to, Ashley as a child, always loved animals more than people. So I think my my first would be I'd bring back all the dire wolves. <laughs> I was very angry at the books. And then, of course, I knew it was going to happen in the show. But I was very angry with their deaths. And 
I'm also mad about how they're treating ghosts, but we can get into that later because that's not right. But um, (laughs) as far as, and the dragons too, but as far as people go, um, that's like you said, there's just so many dead people in this show. So it's really (laughs) hard to say. Um, Gosh, I really liked Ned. So I think he probably would be the one I'd want to bring back and, Oh, uh, like spoilery, the person who got toasted literally last night. I yep. actually liked that character as well. And because I felt like from the beginning, although he was a little shady, he was sh- shady because he wanted what was best, not for the kings and the queens, but for the regular people. And, you know, I just. I felt bad that he had to go because I'm like, really? He actually was one of the more decent people in the realm. Yep. 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 But at the same time, like I got it and yeah, he had to go. I mean, he did, he did do, do the queen wrong and you get caught. This is what happens now. How he got caught and all that is totally a whole nother story and we can, but, (laughs) but yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you there. I know we've said that this show can be a little bit, a little bit, deathy right there's lots of deaths so not to get like crazy bloodthirsty but <clears throat> this is the game of thrones whose death did you legit cheer out loud over anybody's death that you kind of went yes about time yeah 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 because mine was little finger i was all about that dude oh, that was the best going down and how it happened it made me so happy girl power but yes that was that that was that was mine i i, I literally cheered when that dude went away yes <laughs> yeah that i think was my favorite the way it came about was my favorite death yep. cuz yep. it was just yep. so yep. long in coming and to see him outwitted was just so happy (laughs) it was so satisfying it It was was. so satisfying because he was like this little puppet master behind the scenes and you could never trust him and he was uh, doing he had his hand in all kinds of pies and then for him to get his the way he did was amazing so yes (laughs) and then after that joffrey and ramsey just because they were so evil and so horrible it was just you cheered just because yes finally Oh my gosh, those two dudes were like I couldn't even imagine having to play that character. Like how and they, and both actors did phenomenal jobs. But think of the headspace you would have had to get into to be that evil and that disgusting of a person. Oh yeah, just uh, anyway, anyway. Ashley, what about you? Anybody that you? I mean, I think it's it was the same for me. Yeah, obviously. I mean, I literally was cheering. When I read it in the books, too, I'm like, this person needs to go. Needs to go. <laughs> also, I will add not just the three that Nicole mentioned, but also, um, gosh, the guy from the Towers, Frey, Walter Frey, because I loved that Arya got him with the mask, <laughs> with the face, because he deserved it. After the Red Wedding, he deserved that. A hundred percent. And I cheered for that one too. And like you said, just getting in the headspace, particularly, I know the the actor playing Joffrey, I don't think he's doing anything anymore because I think he's like, "Ah, I'm out. I'm good. But Ramsey, that actor was in uh, one of the Marvel shows and I couldn't get past him as Ramsey to watch him in anything else. I'm like, Oh, but you like, I can't with you. And my husband said the same thing. He's like, he did such a good job being disgusting as Ramsey and vile that it's hard to see him anywhere else. So uh, yeah, that, that's gotta be tough. Also as an actor, when you make these decisions to be on these shows and then you, I don't, you know, you hope you don't get typecast because you did such an amazing job at it. But at the same time, you did an amazing job at it. So, yeah, that one's tough. Okay. Do you have a favorite character? Is there someone on the show that you are just uh, like, I'm Team Sansa. She annoyed the crap out of me at the beginning, guys. I This girl was such, oh, she was ridiculous. And in the books, I think she was even more ridiculous. And I was like, Sansa, get a grip, woman. Um 
<laughs> and she's been through some ish though. And all this that she has been through has finally brought her around to she, where now every time she's on screen, I'm like screaming queen. I just, I love her. And so I am team hashtag Sansa all the way. And if she does not end up on the throne next week, or at least being able to say, I was right, you dumb boys. Um, <laughs> I will be flipping tables and writing very strong letters to Game of Thrones. <laughs> Who's your favorite? Um, for me, so ever since the books, again, Arya has been my girl. I loved her. I think because I was a tomboy and I kind of still am. That She was my favorite because she didn't fit into that like pretty little princessy thing. She'd rather stick them with the pointy end and you know, keep it going. And I've called it from the beginning that she would survive. So I'm really hoping that she kills Danny or is that a spoiler? <laughs> um, no, you're good. You're good. You're um, good. I, and I know, I know you want to talk about predictions later, I'm sure. So I won't say what I predict, but I really hope she continues to thrive this last episode and she's mad. Like she, you literally saw that face. She is mad. So Arya is my favorite. I really like Tyrion up until this last season because they've made him stupid, which is so counter to his character. So that's been bothering me a lot. And I think it's fun. And I like Danny too up until recently for a <laughs> multitude of reasons. Again, she like totally went left of her character for so of what she's been doing for so long. Uh, and I think it's hilarious that you like Sansa because she is one in the books that I like. She drove me mad because she just she caused so many problems. And that girl still can't keep a secret. I'm sorry, but she can't. <laughs> she was literally in that group text like, hey, Tyrion, guess what? <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, I just laugh because I think I see my a little of myself in Sansa in that sense is if I get a secret, it's really, really hard for me to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that doesn't that that I, I do keep them again as I'm getting older. I'm getting wiser and better. But, um, but that I think that's what I did like about her because she was just like, hey, I can play this game too, and that was that was her play, and it may have backfired on her. We will have to see what they end up doing next week because I also do have concerns that she doesn't make it through because Danny's a little a little mad about things, and I think she's going to focus on Sansa as her reason why. And I don't, I don't think that's right. I think, yeah, Sansa's, Sansa's played her part, but I think there's lots of other people that Danny has trusted that she could turn her anger to um, in addition, but we'll see. Um, Nicole, do you have a favorite character or, or, or group or family that you love? I do. Uh, Tyrion from the start. Um, Tyrion and Arya, Arya is my, they're my two my two favorites, um, particularly Arya this last couple seasons. Um, I was a Danny fan and now not so much. And I'm sad about that. <laughs> um, so yeah. And Sansa, I, I we're totally with you where I couldn't stand her character. She was just this whiny brat and, and I felt horrible about all the things she went through, but these past like season and a half or two seasons I was like Sansa stepped up this girl is awesome and particularly this last season where it's seeing her kind of come into her own power and be the Lady of Winterfell I'm like okay this is the Sansa I've been wanting all series you know yeah no I completely agree with you on that so I'm glad to hear that I'm not the only one that's team Sansa because <laughs> I just think that they have taken her in, in that unexpected, but at the same time, we hoped we would see the growth um, of this character as she did go from being a silly girl to being somebody who could be the lady of the North. I mean, she could she could rule the North and she would do an incredible job at it. So, and she is, I mean, she kind of is doing that, I guess, already, huh? Yeah. The casting, which I think... Gosh, you know, when I watch the show, I can't think of a single actor that that I'm like, Ugh, I wish they would have picked somebody else for that. They're all they're all pretty good in this. And to to to, <laughs> to their credit, um, I think that could cause them some problems later down, like we already talked about with Joffrey, because, yeah, um, that's Jack Gleason. And he is the um, actor who plays Joffrey. And I think I read that, too, Ashley, that he pretty much. Is like what? What can I do now? I can't do anything for a little bit. So he's like backed out 
because he's got to let Joffrey be scrubbed from people's minds. And I think it's really cool because I think the fans have really separated. Like I think at the beginning it was like, Oh my gosh, he's, he's so evil, but this actor is amazing. You know, that they can go, no, he was playing a character. This isn't the same guy, but I totally get him going. Yeah. I need to take a break from this. Um, I was reading something online and they were saying that when it came to casting um, Peter Dinklage, who plays Tyrion and Sean Bean, who were Ned Stark were, Basically, they were just penciled in and the, the writers were like, that's who we want. That's it. There's no one else. Nobody, don't bring anybody else to read for this. Good luck. Um, <laughs> and I love Sean Bean and, and um, Peter is just awesome, awesome, awesome as Tyrion, um, which I agree. I think, Ashley, did you say, or was it Nicole? I can't remember which one of you said that you were a fan of Tyrion until this season. And I agree. I'm like, how did you get so stupid all of a sudden? Oh, thank you. That is driving me nuts. Yeah, that was me. I... I love Tyrion. He's he's been the like a great character, and now yep. I'm sitting here going, "Why are you so stupid? <laughs> Did you like hang out with Jon Snow too long, and now you also know nothing?" Because they're literally the last two in Westeros that. Oh, hey, she's crazy, and everybody else know, is like, "We said I know, that I know. a long time ago." <laughs> it really, it really is, and I'm just driving like, me nuts. You know nothing, Jon Snow, and you either, Tyrion. You drink and you know things. I think you're just drunk. I, I think we've gotten to that point where you are just drunk because you don't know anything anymore, dude. And uh, yeah, I'm not happy about the turn of events there either. I, okay, we're getting there. We're, we're almost, we're almost to that point. All right, so. Supposedly, there's some prequels that are coming out. Yes. Have you guys heard about this? I don't know a whole lot about it. Do you know anything about, have they announced storylines or do we have an idea of who they're going to focus on for these prequels? I just heard it's coming, but you know how George R. R. Martin is. I might be collecting social security by the time <laughs> that actually comes out. So I might be in Nicole's mom's standpoint where I'm like, ah, it's too much for me. I can't watch it anymore. <laughs> From what I know, the prequels are going to focus on events like thousands of years prior to Game of Thrones. And it's kind of going to go through like all the heroes that we've been hearing about Ah. throughout the story, which I think you kind of get more into if you're a book reader. I don't I think they glossed over a lot of it in the show, but I think that is at least what I've heard is going to be the prequel um, synopsis. Okay, cool. I can be down with that. That that, that could be so that could be interesting. And then I want to know. We've got one episode left. Who should win the throne? Who would be the best ruler of who's left standing? I think John technically would be the best ruler, but he doesn't want it. I'd like to see Sir Davos. I think he he is just a good person with a good heart, even though he's a smuggler and all that. I'd like to see him on the throne. Okay, all right, that that, that I I can be down with that. I like him too. What about you, Ashley? Who who outside of Sir Davos would you pick? <laughs> oh, Sir Davos would be a good one. <laughs> So I think it's going to be John. I originally thought it was going to be John and Danny, but due to her turn of face, I think it's going to be John. And I hope he's going to pick Sansa as his hand of the king because she is smart and she knows more about the runnings and the politics of dealing with you know, the peasants and such like that. And she's got a lot of strong points to his weak points. And I would love to see Arya as his new head of the guard you know she's so bad a <laughs> that she'd be great at training people can you imagine have all kinds of assassins as the <laughs> as the guard around john like you would never get near john and ghosts should also still be around somewhere yeah go- ghosts must live uh, and he must come back because like they just sent yes. him up north <laughs> So I got to laugh about this because you just named off all the Stark children, but we don't have creepy Bran in the mix. (laughs) Bran just is straight up creepy and has been for a long, long time in this show. Uh, And for those that don't know, Bran's the the little brother. Wait, is he older than Arya? I don't even remember. I don't even remember the the aging anymore, (laughs) but he's just creepy Bran now. And... um, Someone online was saying that he should end up on the throne because he sees all, he knows all. <laughs> he would be the best ruler. 
for Westeros. And I was like, I hadn't thought about that one, but interesting. So we'll see. Now we know how we also know with Game of Thrones, what we want is probably not going to (laughs) happen. So that being said, does anybody have any predictions on how you think it's going to wrap up next week? Okay, so can I give a spoiler yeah, warning? Yeah, go for your spoilers. Spoiler <laughs> warning. This is how I think it's going to go down. I think Arya's going to go to kill Danny. She's got the green eyes. And we know she needs a pair of green eyes. And I don't think she will be successful. I think she'll survive. I think John's going to see it go down at some point, And he's going to have to make a choice between Danny and Arya. And I think he's going to make the choice to, for his family. And he's going to kill Danny, or at least mortally wound her. And I don't think the dragon's going to attack him because he's also Targaryen. So I think he's safe as far as Drogon is concerned. And like I said, I would love to see him appoint Sansa as his advisor. And he's he, he knows nothing, but he's smart enough to know that he knows nothing. So I think he's going to surround himself with some good people. If Tyrion lasts, I hope he also gains his wisdom back <laughs> in all of this. And he would also be a great addition to Jon's council. So I'm, that's what I'm hoping for at the end. And again, the Starks have had so much taken away from them that they deserve to have the happily ever after in whatever form that looks like in the weird, weird, weird Westeros. And Bran, I, I hadn't heard that theory. Bran is such a useless character. Oh. I just, I mean, in the books, I was like, Bran is the worst. <laughs> like Stark, like he's pointless. And now, like, what is, what is he? What is his job now? To sit there and like stare people down, all creepy, like. <laughs> I just, you know, he's. It was a weird character anyway, and I don't think they did a good job writing him either. So it's. It, I don't think he's going to do anything. I think he'll just go be a historian somewhere or something. All right. All right. All right, Nicole. Uh, what do you think? What What is your prediction <sighs> for next week? What I'd like to see <laughs> is I'd love to see Arya wearing somebody's face and killing Danny. Yep. 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 Um, I don't know who, whose face she would wear. Maybe Grey Worms. I don't know. Um, there's that whole, you know, brown eyes, green eyes, blue eyes thing. Um, So I would like to see kind of one final, okay, she didn't get to kill Cersei, but she gets to kill one crazy queen. Um, Yeah, I I think that it'll probably be Jon, um, but I'd like to see Arya get one more kind of good good kill in there. Um, And I'd like to see more dragons. I I don't know if that's going to be a thing. There's a whole kind of conspiracy theory that you know one of the dragons went off and nobody knew uh danny didn't even know where um they went and um so i'd love to see you know more dragons kind of show up at the very end but i'm hoping she doesn't end up on the throne but it's game of thrones so anything is possible right Uh, right you know so it's it's i could easily see her on the throne and be yeah well that's game of thrones you know i felt like i feel like I don't know. So a spoiler alert for those that didn't read the books, there is a character that got, quote unquote, killed in the Red Wedding that didn't die. Ashley, you know who I'm talking about, right? Yes, I do. And I have been waiting for her to pop back into the scene because she would be pretty instrumental in the Stark family uh, lineage if this should happen. Um, I have no idea if there is enough time in this last episode to have it happen and have it make sense because it might be one of those like, where have you been for the last million years, woman? Like it just might be stupid. So I'm not sure if she's going to come back or not. But if she did, it it might it might be it might be super interesting and satisfying um, if that happens. I don't want to say who it's supposed to be in case it does happen and it's a big reveal. So I'm going to leave that out. As- that would be so awesome, though, wouldn't it? But I, I, you talk about it not making sense. I mean, that last episode kind of didn't make sense. Girl, so okay, so they could bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> 
That is a good point. All right. So let's, so now here we go, guys. We're going to just say some brief thoughts on this last episode because we all have them and we all have our feelings and they're not pretty Game of Thrones writers. If you happen to, to be listening for me this season, I've been okay with it. I haven't been loving it. I haven't, it hasn't been my favorite, but I've been okay with it because I mentioned this to you guys before. I'm not super critical. I am very much, I want to be entertained. I want to enjoy. I want to feel things, but not feel too much usually (laughs) Um, because I guard my heart (laughs) when it comes to my entertainment. I I don't, I don't watch This Is Us because I can't handle it. I don't want to cry every single week, right? So I want to be, I want to be entertained. So for the most part, this season, I've been okay with it. Again, not loving it, but not not hating it. I haven't been on the Game of Thrones' Jump the Shark bandwagon until kind of last night. I, I finally got there, and I just kind of looked around like, what is this? So this is where we're going with this. And at the same time, I I don't know what I expected because we only have two episodes left. So they had to like rush things and get it done. But I guess maybe that's what I'm mad about is for a season that took so much time with every episode and every storyline. Here we go at the end. They're just kind of like mushing it all together and throwing it out there. And that's pretty crappy to do to your fans, especially when you're making choices that meh, I didn't, I didn't love. So what are your thoughts on last night's episode, Nicole? Oh, um, <laughs> I have such mixed feelings on this this whole season, but um, part of the thing that I didn't like about this last night's episode is I feel like the I feel like the characters are doing things that are, seem very uncharacteristic of them, and I also feel the pacing is really off. Um, I usually watch the show live, like it's on HBO. Like, don't bother me; I'm watching HBO. Um, and this episode I ended up watching on, um, streaming so I could pause it. And there were times where I just felt this dragged on and where I'm like, okay, we get it. It's a horrible battle and, and this and that. And I, I ended up fast forwarding through parts, um, because I just felt like, okay, you're this, this seemed excessive rather than furthering any story. And then when we did get story parts, I felt like those were too short. Like I wanted more of, you know, Arya and the Hound and that beat that they have in the Red Keep and other things like that, where I was like, I just felt like where they spent their time felt very strange. So I, yeah, I I didn't love this episode. Um, I get where they're going with it. I get that Danny's the new big bad now that the White Walkers are gone and and Cersei was kind of a, you know, 50-50 chance. But um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm not terribly invested, but I'm, I'm just like, okay, this is where we're going. All right. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, the crazy thing is, is I I had a flash at the end as I was watching Danny just do what she did, which is basically take down the entire town. And I was like, what is she doing? However, do you remember? I mean, I know you remember the episode before Miss Sand- Miss Sandy's last word. Oh yeah, no, I, I totally get where she's she going looked, with this. Yeah, she looked her straight in the face and was like, "Do it, yeah, kill, kill <laughs> do them all. it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah." So I, it shouldn't have been a surprise that that's what ended up happening, especially. Uh, the way that Danny was acting after the loss of her friend and feeling betrayed and blah, 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 blah. And obviously, you know, the signs are on the wall that we were moving to this Mad Queen episode. But um, but yeah, I mean, she she told her as she, on her deathbed, this is what I want you to do, lady. <laughs> and she did it. But I, <laughs> the only like problem I had with that was that. Okay, so we've had all these seasons of of Danny like being the breaker of chains, and yes, she's building her army, and that's her main goal and stuff. But you know, we've seen the the Daenerys who wants to help people, who truly wants to be you know like, look, I can do a lot of good here with this power that I have. Um, and so the fact that she she didn't go after the Red Keep first is she took out people rather than going straight for the queen. And I think that was the biggest, like, kind of, I guess, issue that I had where it was like, okay, so now she's just the big bad. She's just straight up crazy. She's a Targaryen, you know, she's mad queen, you know, and I was like, 
that I, that I think that was the the kind of like misstep for me is I could totally see her taking out like just going you know destroying the red keep leaving nothing there but the fact that she didn't go there first that she just started taking out not just soldiers but people and just going up and down the streets you know um basically firebombing before she gets to Cersei um which just it was just something that I was like I get where they're doing with this but I just it just felt like a it went on forever it. it really did it, it, no, I completely agree with you. I, I, I think it was, it, yeah, it was, it was unnecessary, and we got the point. All right, we got the point, but it just went on and on and on. And meanwhile, Cersei's still standing there, and it's just like, come on, guys, like, go get her. Somebody do something here. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, Ashley, what about you? What did, what did, what did you think about last night's episode? Oh gosh, where to begin? I last night. That's how angry I am. I can't even think about it. Uh, <laughs> Last night really just made me mad. And like you said, Patty, the pacing has been pretty quick this season. And like you, I haven't been upset with that because I knew that going in. It's not what I would like it to be, but it's what it needs to be for the lack of episodes. I mean, six episodes, you got to like, hurry up. We're all of a sudden we're in King's Landing. You know, they're teleporting or whatever they need to do to get there. And so that I was okay with, but... What made me the most angry was that it really seemed like the writing just fell apart and that as quick as the pacing is going, all of a sudden the writing is just not even trying to keep up. It's like, okay, John's going to stand there and do nothing. Daenerys is going to torch the whole city. Arya is not going to get her revenge on Cersei. Cersei doesn't even get the death she deserves. A lot of it just was just made me angry last night and although they've been setting her up to be crazy or to be the mad queen i legitimately thought she would kill all the lannister guards regardless of them putting down their swords i did not expect her to then torch the city and all the innocent people because if you remember back to yep. i believe it's season one yep when yep. she's with the dothraki and they're pillaging and plundering she's yeah, appalled she appalled by all of that I mean, that's been her stick this whole time. Keep the innocents safe and liberate the slaves. And now all of a sudden she's just like, forget it, burn them all. It's like, okay, you're a little crazy now. So it just, it felt so out of character. I will say I liked the hounds moment with the mountain because I didn't think he would be able to survive that fight because the mountain is like a mutant zombie thing now. Was, I don't know what he was he is. so gross. He was so gross. Rob was like, take the mask off, take the mask off. I was like, no, I don't want to see it. <laughs> so I felt like the hound and the mountains moment was a good one. The fact that Sander ended up laughing, just like, oh my gosh, so like at how ridiculous it was to be dealing with his brother who's not even alive, but I've, you know, he got to take him out. So I was happy for the hound to get his revenge on his brother after all these years of him wanting it and going into the last episode. I mean, it's hard to say how angry we're all going to be by the end of it. Yeah. I definitely agree with you on what was happening with the hound. I liked the way, and I liked how he and Arya wrapped up too. I thought that was actually sweet uh, which is funny to say that about those two characters because you would have never <laughs> thought their relationship was sweet, but it really was sweet. Um, so I did, I did really enjoy that. Um, my my anger issues, and I don't know, maybe I just I wish the best of people all the time. I really, really was disappointed in Jamie freaking <sighs> Lannister when he when he left Brienne. I oh, was girl. okay because I thought he was leaving Brienne to go kill his sister. I thought he was like, if somebody has to do it, it needs to be me. She's carrying my baby. It's my like, it's my responsibility. Like that was what my head was. But he didn't want to say that to anybody because he didn't want. I don't know. He didn't want anybody to know. I don't know. But that was just my very naive thinking. Was he was going to actually kill her, not save her? And then when. F- freaking Tyrion is like, here, buddy, go save my brat sister who's been awful to me my entire life and is probably the worst human being in the... But I know you love her, so go save her. What? No. No, 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 no. (laughs) No. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. So that was where I, mm-hmm. anyway, that was where I kind of lost it too. That, that, those were my two big disappointments were the, the Lannister brothers. They just, Cersei stayed the same, but those two I expected more from. I expected more from Tyrion. Yeah, no, Tyrion being stupid all, all episode uh, really, really irked me because he's supposed to be smarter. And I felt like throughout this season, he just keeps making the worst decisions. And uh, yeah, him, that whole thing with him and, and Jamie. I get that he cares about his brother. That actually was a really nice moment, but that he's freeing Jamie to go save Cersei, who, like you said, has been this horrible person to him since birth, just made no sense to me whatsoever. I wasn't I wasn't happy with that that at all. And I so that's my that's my big disappointment with this one. But uh yeah, we'll have to see how they decide to wrap everything up we'll have to see if any of our predictions actually come true we'll have to see if anybody can stop the mad queen danny um guys this has been fun and and thanks so much for (laughs) for joining me and for being on the no guilt fangirls podcast and i hope you'll come back to fangirl over some other shows in the future we'll we'll talk about it we'll find some more you two have like a vast knowledge on a lot of different things. So there's definitely topics that we can, we can bring you both back on for, but I do so appreciate you being here and walking us through all this craziness. that is the game of Thrones. And uh, that being said, guys, we're going to wrap this up. If you like what you heard today and you want more of it, please don't forget to leave us a review subscribe. You can find us on all of your podcasting apps and take us with you in the future. Um, And if you have any suggestions or topics of shows that you want to hear more about, that you want to fangirl over with us, please make sure to leave those in a comment like on iTunes. And we are going to happily be reading all of those and make make note and see what we can put into the next schedule. All right. Thanks, ladies. 